Okay, so um, we are the Dream Act Tour. I'm with Sean Gareth. Um, can you can you uh, explain? Can you uh, make for us a quick review uh, of the land of the Dream Act Tour? Sure. Uh, so we started off. We played against Navi on Cobble, and I believe we played a pretty bad game in my opinion. They constantly had our economy in shambles, and we lost so many clutch rounds that game. Um, we lost round like I believe it was like six or so, like one v one or one v twos. Uh, particularly one w against Simple where he like 1v2 deagled us from Chicken Coop. Um, so I don't think the score is very representative of how we played that match. And then after that, we then played Heroic in the best of three. And Mirage kind of started off in a similar fashion. I mean, throughout the entire best of three, we won one pistol. So really put ourselves in a bad spot. We won zero eco rounds to like get back those rounds. And we got eco'd ourselves another handful of times, you know. So we were in constantly bad spots throughout the series against Heroic. Uh, but we managed to come back from 15-11 and Amonic's huge clutch in overtime, the 1v2, where he defused the bomb at the last tick. It was like huge rounds for us uh, at the end of Mirage, propelled us forward. We knew Nuke would be a tough map for us. We lost to Heroic on Nuke and then uh, Train was one of our stronger maps throughout the entire boot camp, so we were very confident there. And that went our way against Heroic. Um, versus Navi, Again, we were, we were very confident, actually. We played them before the, the groups for the tournament were released at boot camp in Berlin, five, day, five days before the tournament. And we played them very well um, throughout all the maps we played them on. Um, so we were confident. We knew we could hang with them on train, especially, even though it um, didn't really go our way the first time on Kabul. But um, we knew we could train, hang with them on train. And we obviously went off to a great start, 14-0 or something like that. Uh, closed them out on train. Uh, they took the first map though. I can't. I can't even remember. Was it? They, they picked train. It was our pick. Oh my gosh! I can't even remember at this point. <laughs> it, yeah, I don't remember. But um, and then we we took we took it easy on Mirage too, which was another great map for us in boot camp. So then we went on today to play Hellraisers in the semifinals, and uh, we we got the maps we thought we were going to get in the veto process. We. We, we were very comfortable on Cash, Mirage, and Kabul. Uh, we had a lot of debate whether we wanted to pick Kabul or we wanted to have it be our third map because we knew we could get it as the third map. Whereas we knew if we picked it, the third map would be a very bad map for us. You know, like They would have won the veto had we picked Mirage. So we opted to get it as our third map and pick Kabul instead. And I think we just made too many mistakes on Kabul. We, we constantly were just missing smokes and stuff like that on executes um, people kind of forgot their roles and the match ended 16 14 in their favor uh so then we went to cash and they just they honestly completely outclassed us on cash it was it was kind of not even close our economy was broken the entire game and we struggled like big time on cash in my opinion okay so you said you um, you've done uh, some uh, mistakes uh, what are you going to do to to fix them uh, yeah, in the next uh, few weeks. Yeah, so coming into this tournament, we only had 10 days of practice. So five in NA and then five in EU. I think when we go back home, we obviously want to expand on what we practiced here because uh, even though we practice like 12 hours a day minimum, you know, um, it's hard to retain all that information. So we want to like drill that down some more, make sure everyone is you know, comfortable with the things they do because we, we just honestly we didn't even have time to, to really test it and then tweak, tweak it a little bit and fix it. It was more like, no, this is what you're going to do. <laughs> like, yeah, we don't have time, so you have to do it. Uh, so we're going to make sure everyone's comfortable with everything they're doing now. Add Overpass into our map pool. Uh, we came in this tournament with six maps. Uh, didn't play Overpass because we knew uh, like Navi, Heroic, G2, um, Hellraisers. All these teams love playing Overpass. So we knew playing Overpass at this land it wouldn't have been a good idea for us, so we opted to just make that our perma ban. So I think we're, when we get home, we're going to have a seven map map pool, go over that last map, and take it from there. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so let's talk. Uh, you know, uh, our website is um, the French website, so um, uh, we want to talk about uh, Amanek and Debojivek, of course. Um, how did you add the ID to, to recruit them, to pick them? Uh, can you explain uh, to us? Yeah, so I um, actually found Devo Duvac through HLTV's stat page. I, I sorted it by like the last three months. Uh, I looked to see 
players like obviously outside of like the top 10 teams because they're probably not going to leave their teams so they're probably happy where they are and i noticed his name and i know i actually never heard of him before before that so i downloaded a dozen of his demos or so i watched them see what kind of player he was see it, see if he was like an awp player because obviously if he was an awp player it it wouldn't really work because shazam's on the team so i downloaded the demos watched them this is before i ever talked to him uh, noticed he was very calm, collected, poised, uh, had really good aim, didn't make any like super aggressive plays that didn't need to be made. You know, he wasn't jumping through smokes or doing stuff like that. Yeah, he wasn't being like greedy with it with his plays, um, which was something I really liked. That's something that you don't see when you watch a lot of lower tier North American players. You see them try too hard to win rounds. And he never did that. Even though even though his team was like on the verge of like losing sometimes. He never made a play that he didn't have to make. He didn't make plays. Like, Devo makes tons of plays. He, when he sees holes and gaps, he's going to take it every time. But he never made incorrect plays, I felt like, when I watched those demos. And, it, yeah, it was a definitely a huge risk picking him up because, uh, obviously, the, tier, the level of opponent he was playing in those demos is a lot worse. But at that moment, then I, like, messaged him. I was like, what, hey, man, I, I've been looking at your demos. Like, we're going to have a spot. Like, um, and then after that, Peacemaker actually found Demonic and uh, Cyril, our manager, who's Kenny's brother, yeah. Kenny S's brother. Yeah, he uh, he got us in touch with, I mean, like them both, and really helped propel the whole thing at that point. And so uh, that's kind, it's just kind of snowballed, honestly. I don't know. Okay, cool. Um, so um, how how um, I don't know the the world. How d the integration of the these two players, these two French players, how was it in your team? Like. Uh, do they, do they speak uh, English very well? Uh, how is it for you to, to have two um, foreigners uh, players in the NA team? Yeah, I was definitely worried because, I mean, I'd never played with, uh, like, any foreign players or anything like that before. But their English shocked me, how good it was. Um, I was very surprised. They knew, like, I mean, they learned all of the call-outs for the map. Like, that's... That's crazy. We had 10 days of practice and they learned all of the call outs immediately. You know, like they, there's very smart people and um, they we hardly ever. I mean, we do have some communication problems right now, but it's only in like very chaotic, hectic 2v2, 3v3s where we do a strat and things don't go right. You know, like things don't go properly. Someone maybe misses a smoke and like someone's in like some spot in the middle of the open. Uh, and there's no real words to describe where that person is. Even in English, you would like someone like me would struggle to, to describe where someone is, and the communication at that moment would break down. Um, we had like maybe uh, less than a handful of those moments throughout all of our matches. And then there's like sometimes too, like in the la very last round against Navi on Mirage, it was like me and Amonic versus Seize or something like that in a one on two, and <laughs> Amonic started talking to me in French. <laughs> and I was like. I was like, uh, I, I understood what he wanted me to do, but it was just because I was kind of playing off of how he was moving. He wanted me to just follow him and bait him, but uh, it was really funny, actually. He'd never done that before, but I, I knew what he wanted, so it was, it was, we all laughed, honestly. It was pretty funny. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, on our website, uh, we are used to let our, our guests uh, end um, the interview, so it's your time. The camera is over here. Cool. So I definitely want to thank like everyone who supported us the entire event. Uh, the fans here have been fantastic. <laughs> I think maybe because we have the two French players on our team or something. <laughs> but it's been such a good event for us as far as like that goes, the interactions with people. Uh, thank uh, DreamHack for having us and Ben, the owner of Misfits, for, for making this all happen. And yeah, we're definitely going to keep trying hard and try to make the finals next time for sure.